Shut up and sit down, you big bald fuck. Imagine losing a diamond the size of your fist to a dog that's more trouble than treasure. Welcome to the chaotic, pulse-pounding world of Snatch, where gangsters, boxers, and bare-knuckle fighters all battle for a single stone. But let's be honest, it's not really about the diamond. Is it? Welcome to Specialist Cinema, I am Chandler, and here we go beyond the screen, diving into deeper meanings to the movies that we both love. Let's break down the stories that stick with us one film at a time. If you enjoy videos like these, consider subscribing to keep videos coming weekly. So the movie starts, a gang of thieves disguised as Orthodox Jews pull off a daring heist in Antwerp, stealing an 86 carat diamond. That's a lot of money. Frankie Fourfingers is the ringleader, and he's sent to London to deliver the diamond on behalf of his cousin Alvi a New York City jeweler with mafia ties. Now, here's where things start to unravel. Frankie's not just a thief. He's also got a serious gambling problem. And wouldn't you know it, on his way out of Antwerp, someone tells him to grab a gun from Boris, the Blade, an ex-KGB agent. Boris actually plans to steal the diamond back before Frankie can sell it. Why trust Boris, right? Wouldn't you think twice before dealing with a guy called the Blade? In a parallel story, a boxing promoter, Turkish, yeah, that's his name, gets roped into setting up a fight for the crime boss, Bricktop. His boxer, Gorgeous George, is supposed to face one of Bricktop's guys. Enter Mickey O'Neill, an Irish traveler, a gypsy if you will, who can knock someone out with a single punch, literally. He flattens Gorgeous George, which means Turkish, now needs Mickey to fight. The stakes? Keep Bricktop happy no matter what, or it's game over for everyone. They will go through a body that weighs 200 pounds in about eight minutes. That means that a single pig can consume two pounds of uncooked flesh every minute. Have you ever had like one simple job and it completely exploded in your face? That's Turkish right now. Meanwhile, Frankie makes his way to London and with that diamond, but Boris gives him a gun in exchange for a small favor. Frankie is unfortunately a sucker for betting. So Boris tells him to place a wager with a local bookie run by no other than Bricktop. But here's where it gets really juicy. Boris has secretly hired two low level criminals, Vinny and Sol, to rob Frankie and get the diamond from him. Why do I love watching characters who are doomed from the very start? Frankie's addiction makes him predictable. And in a world like this, predictability gets you killed. And of course the robbery goes wrong because you know, this is how the film works. Now Vinny and Sol trying to pull it off but end up kidnapping Frankie instead. Avi, who's starting to panic about his precious diamond, not his cousin, flies to London to retrieve it personally. You hear that, Doug? I'm coming to London. Shut up and sit down, you big bald fuck. Bring his bodyguard, Rosebud, along for the ride. It's like a tug of war where nobody wins. You feel the tension climbing. Everyone wants this freaking diamond. Nobody trusts anyone. And with Frankie stuck between a greedy gangsters, it's only a matter of time before the blood spills or an arm comes off. Then there's a fight. Bricktop, the man for a taste with fixing fights and feeding people to pigs, needs Mickey to throw his next match in the fourth round. Oh, but Mickey, grieving with the death of his mother, thanks to Bricktop for burning the caravan down, has other plans. Why do we root for the underdog when we all know he's about to break the rules? Mickey is supposed to lose part of the plan, but deep down, you caught him to smash his opponent to pieces. Spoiler, he does. After knockout, after punch, Mickey keeps winning. And when he's supposed to be losing, so it kind of looks bad for Bricktop. Okay, okay, picture this. Gangsters, guns, a crazy dog. That's what we're dealing with now. In a very unfortunate and desperate move, Avi accidentally kills Tony, his own bodyguard. <laughs> and then flies back to New York faster and empty-handed. So who ends up with a diamond? Not the guy who was supposed to have it, not the professionals, just two guys walking a dog who didn't even know it was their lucky day. Yeah, next morning, Turkish and Tommy find the traveler's camp deserted with Mickey and his crew having vanished along with their winnings. The cops show up, but our heroes dodge trouble by pretending they were just walking that dog. As they drive away, they stumble upon Vinny's dog and by sheer luck discover the diamond inside. Honestly, this story kind of mimics life in a way luck, bad decisions, and the people who stick with you when things go south. You never know who's gonna walk away with the prize, but it's not always the one chasing the hardest. So Turkish and Tommy, they end up with a diamond after all. It's not about luck, not about who's the toughest, it's about who is the last man standing. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to keep videos like these coming weekly. Catch you in the next movie. In fact, I think you'd be interested in this one.